Top academics have warned the government that new guidance for universities risks politicising the subject of mathematics. For maths degrees, professors have to explain how they are presenting a multicultural and decolonised view of the subject. The academic sent a joint letter, seen by GB News, that such guidance risks politicising the subject of math mathematics and presenting a skewed perspective on its history and infringes on the academic freedom of mathematicians to teach their subject according to their best professional judgement. One of the dozen professors who put their name to the letter is Professor Jane Hutton from the Department of Statistics at the University of Warwick, and she joins me now. Professor Hutton, thanks very much for joining me. Can I ask you first and foremost about this notion of decolonisation? Because, uh, you know, I understand that this came in largely through the humanities, English literature, that kind of subject, the social sciences. But surely mathematics and science, these things should be immune to those other culture war concerns. Well, yes, that's interesting. I mean, this time next week, I'll be in Cameroon in Africa at the African Institute of Mathematical Sciences with 60 students from all over Africa, my 11th time of going out as a volunteer to teach there. And when I was there in January 2022, I watched something uh, <clears throat> about critical race theory set up by North American liberals. And frankly, the Africans were appalled. They're not interested in becoming a colony, you know, succumbing to cultural imperialism from North American liberals. They want to learn mathematics. And those of us who are mathematicians are well aware how international the subject is. Can I ask you, to what extent do mathematicians in this country feel under pressure to accommodate these palpably ideological ideas within their subject? Very much so. I mean, I am willing to speak out. Um, but very few of my colleagues are, and they will send me emails and thank me for speaking out, um, but they will not allow themselves to be identified. And I'm talking about colleagues, senior managers, professors, IT staff, cleaners, gardeners. Um, they know I'll speak out. Uh, they're appalled by this behaviour and other issues coming from this whole North American liberal imperialism. Um, Professor Hatton, can, can, can I ask you specifically, what is it they're asking you to do exactly? I mean, I've seen, for instance, people saying that in, in engineering, for instance, when you're teaching about Isaac Newton, you should discuss his problematic views on race as though that was in any way relevant to the law of motion. Uh, what, what are they specifically asking mathematicians to do in these courses? Well, they're not actually even asking mathematicians to have an intelligent intellectual discussion. They're asking us to propagate their ideas. Um, for example, they will have particular views on, say, Ramachandran or, you know, in statistics, one of the things we teach is the Rayo-Blackwell theorem. Um, C.R. Rayo is an Indian. Uh, David Blackwell is an African-American. But we don't spend our time focusing on that. We focus on the mathematics. And there's a time and place for everything, as Aristotle pointed out. You don't evaluate mathematics by the standards of poetry or poetry by the standards of mathematics. And what surprises me, you know, I'm not a historian, I'm not a philosopher, there's the sheer ignorance of so much of what these people propose and the reluctance, it's intellectually lazy. So yeah. you can't ask a question like, um, how, how come critical race theory says that being white is an absolutely dreadful thing, you can't say you don't have these prejudices, you are irredeemably white, but if you're a man, you can become a woman just by saying so. Why are these two completely, thoroughly, genetically, physically um, centred properties treated so differently? But of course, I know perfectly well that I am likely to get a whole lot of abuse for even raising the question. Well, and, it's in you know the previous speaker talked it's about interesting that you raised... being protected. That, that well, idea of identity that. politics, Professor Hutton, that's come into these qu questions, when, of course, identity politics has very little to do with mathematics. I mean, surely in mathematics, the answer is either right or wrong. I mean, I know I, I don't have any expertise in this area, but you can, you can correct me if I'm wrong about that. Yes, and, and, and that makes mathematics very unpopular. Uh, we've had, I've had to deal with people trying to teach us that in teaching, you must never tell a student they've got the right answer or the wrong answer. To which I say, you're a parasitical hypocrite. We wouldn't be talking to one another using the equipment we're using without a lot of people getting things very, very precisely right in engineering and mathematics. 
So is this um, quite commonplace, the idea that, that students should not be told that they are wrong? How can they possibly oh, I, improve? I to, yes, I, I act to both uh, training PhD students as teachers and junior colleagues as teachers. And that used to be the standard rhetoric from social scientists. Uh, you what? must never tell it. The mature learner knows there's no right answer. But does this not patronise students needlessly? I mean, aren't the students annoyed yes. at being patronised in this way? Yes. Yes. When I put up, I put up an article saying debate on gender dysphoria is being silenced. Uh, the equality officer stirred up a manager to to sound of out outraged um, and said, you put it on a notice board where students might see it. Um, so I asked the PhD students, it was during the long back, what they thought of this. And they said, thank you very much for talking. We are appalled that at the University of Warwick, which is not particularly bad, we have a very good vice chancellor, at the University of Warwick to discuss a topic which is the subject of a public consultation we have to go into an office and lock the doors and whisper. Why is this what the University of Warwick is offering us? Well, and I have you, to say, say, Professor Hudson, that, that is at least reassuring that some of the students themselves are not putting up with this. No, Professor Hudson, thank you so much for joining me and explaining this bizarre situation tonight. I really appreciate it. Well, I don't know what to make of this, Leo. I'm getting a bit <laughs> sick of it, to be honest. You yeah. Know, what, decolonizing maths? One plus one equals two. I mean, I think, That's it. I think we have to accept that Western civilization is over if we're not allowed to, <laughs> to get maths right anymore. You know, we're going we're gonna to see planes falling out of the sky. Bridges are going to collapse. This is, a, yeah. this is an absolute nonsense. Uh, how can maths? Maths is the purest science. It's just, you know, it's, it's universal. It, it's, it, it doesn't... All right, you know, the, the mathematicians who invent a sum or whatever maths is made out of, like, <laughs> they, they can belong to a certain, you know, gender or whatever, but maths itself is, it, is a pure again, science. What was so interesting about what Professor Hudson was saying was that, you know, for what, for, for a start, the students don't like this. They think it's nonsense. But also African people, yeah. actually like black people in other countries are yeah. saying this is nonsense. This is a form of imperialism pushing yeah. these ideas on us. So isn't it, this is, a, it's, it's, it's mad. It is mad considering that uh, math, or as you call it, maths, is one of the most colonial subjects ever, which is... We use Arabic numerals. We do. And we included the number, the letters, whatever, the number zero, which we didn't have before. Well, that. maths yeah. does not come from a white European background. That's not, it, not, it, not its origin. Yeah. This well, idea that this is imperialism. I, said, well, I said it wrong. I said it's, it isn't. It's, yeah, I know what you meant. Yeah, yeah, we all yeah. know what you mean. Well, there's a lot of problematic numbers that I think need to be eliminated from the, the number <laughs> alphabet. So there's, uh, there's four, which, which looks like uh, it's goose stepping. There's five, which is half a swastika. Uh, there's eight. There's eight that looks like a fat woman. You know, these, these are all, or, sorry, a body positive, beautiful, any size woman. Yeah. yeah. So we should decolonize math as well. Absolutely. We need to decolonize. <laughs> Just be left with like three numbers and you've got to yeah. do all the sums with them. And, okay. and it's been used to make me uh, bankrupt. <laughs> numbers. Well, I don't think we're going to solve this tonight, but honestly, uh, the more these things happen, I'm just getting so sick of it. Anyway.